Here at IPG, we have a metallurgy lab and a full-on metallurgy lab. Because at IPG, it's all about laser processing for us, we really use these to fully characterize the parts that we machine. We can prepare the samples uh, for adequate metrology and all the measurements that we need to do, uh, and then fully characterize them in terms of the properties from microstructure to mechanical properties, as well as chemical composition. We are currently inspecting microvias that were drilled in a silicon nitride ceramic with an IPG custom inspection tool. Uh, this is built on one of our IX series platforms. We are inspecting for positional accuracy as well as the, the height and width of our rectangular microvias. This is another one of our visual inspection systems. This particular part is a stainless steel part cut on a fiber laser using an IPG laser cube. We take the DXF information, download it into this software, and we can inspect for hole size and positional accuracy to whatever tolerancing we uh, deem appropriate. This is a stylus profilometer, contact type uh, method of measuring the surface roughness of the materials and is currently measuring the surface roughness of the stainless part that we have cut. So in this case, the straightness of the cut wall and the surface roughness is meeting the customer specification. So here we're in the sample preparation area where we are using a cutoff saw to dice up welding and cutting samples for mounting, polishing, grinding, and then inspection. This is one more step of sample preparation. After we dice the samples, mount it in a hot press, we grind it, polish it to a mirror finish, and then move on to etching where we uh, drop acid onto the metal to bring out the grain structure and can actually see the weld bead. So at IPG, for inspection and measurement of the parts that are laser processed, we have optical microscopy, scanning, electron microscopy, and atomic force microscopy. Uh, which one you use really depends on the part that you're machining or the, the feature that you're trying to analyze. For example, uh, if you want to look at parts using magnifications up to like a thousand X, we would most likely use optical uh, microscopy. Above that, you'll use scanning electron microscopy or atomic force microscopy, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, for example, you know, SEM is used for, if you really care about uh, high depth of focus on the samples and you want to check parts in depth, uh, while an AFM would be uh, allowing you to use or, or to uh, inspect parts with really high contrast. In addition to weld measurements, optical microscopy is used to measure the grain size and phase area in a weld zone and heat affected zone and to measure the potential defects such as micropores in the weld zone. So this is a cross section of the bead on plate welds done by IPG Wobblehead. The weld measurement is often required to meet the mechanical properties of the welded part, attributes such as weld depth and the width of the welds at different locations. These bead on plate welds are done by totally different wobble parameters, and as you see, they result in a significantly different weld profile. Here we are performing the Rockville hardness testing. It is a macro test to quantify the relative hardness of the materials. It uses a diamond tip with a certain load uh, and measures the indentation depth into the materials to distinguish the hardness of the materials. So in micro hardness test, uh, so we use a low level of forces to create very small micro level indentations. In this case, this is a Vickers micro hardness test performed on a weld zone uh, of a processed sample and the uh, size of indentation is measured optically by the system and we could have a typical graphs like this. It's uh, mic many micro hardness measurements along uh, a long line crossing the weld zone, heat affected zone and base metal. You could have some hardening in heat weld zone, uh, some increased hardness in heat affected zone and softer base metal. So many of our customers have specific strength requirements and we design the process to meet those strength requirements as well as providing 
consistent, clean, repeatable welds. So this is an example of a coated copper alloy. The coating was, has been removed by laser ablation and we're using the EDS to make sure that the top layer is totally removed and we are down to the bottom metal only. This is an X-ray fluorescence gun. It's a portable, non-destructive test method used to determine elemental composition of a material. So in laser ablation, we're removing a coating from the surface of a material, and we use the XRF to determine whether the layer has been re completely removed. So the results from the XRF gun uh, give us a table full of elemental composition and allow us to positively identify a material which helps us determine laser processing parameters. We can inspect these parts uh, at a macro level as well as at a micro level so we can get very detailed information in terms of anything that the laser may be doing to the samples. So by characterizing them really well, um, that's an add-on advantage to our customers as well as to us because it allows us to optimize our processes uh, in a way that we wouldn't be able to otherwise. For more information about our metrology and metallurgy lab capabilities and to send us your most challenging samples, please contact us at 508-373-1100.